Hey guys, it's Jake and welcome to the channel where I share show videos, tips, and recommendations. And in today's video, we'll be going over what you can do in Krabi, Thailand. So things like Raleigh Beach, Phranang Beach, and the Tiger Temple Cave. I'll also be showing you exactly what I did over my three days there. So quick background, when we were going to Thailand, we were trying to choose between going to Krabi or to a Phuket. I was most interested in going to Raleigh Beach and checking out the Fifi Islands. I'd also heard that Phuket was most known for the party and adult life entertainment scene. And since we were going with my mom, I was not trying to get into any kind of weird situations around any of that. So we chose to go to Krabi because it was closer to Raleigh Beach and I was super happy with that decision. If you stick around until the end, I'll share some helpful tips on getting to Ao Nang Beach, the reason we stayed there over at Krabi Town, and why on the last night we had the power turned off in our hotel room twice. All right, but enough of that. Let's dive in to what you can do in Krabi, Thailand. Oops, sorry about that. Here's the view from our hotel. We had a beach day planned, but first walked across the street from our hotel to Cafe 8.98 for breakfast. The food was fine, a bit pricey, and it felt like we were back in the States with a typical egg and avocado toast breakfast. We made our way down to Ao Nang Beach before hiring a longboat to take us to Raleigh Beach. The shuttle company offers multiple boat rides per day and usually waits until there is a minimum of six people to take off. And after a beautiful and quick 15 minute boat ride, we made it to the west side of Raleigh Beach. Just an FYI, when getting out of the long boats, expect to be at least thigh deep in water and sometimes more, the boats can't make it all the way up to the shore. When we got to the beach, we were amazed by the views, the water was the perfect temperature, and were pleasantly surprised that the beach was not crowded. We then decided to wander around the peninsula and see about getting to the other side of the beach. There were plenty of shops and waterfront restaurants and as we walked through the shops, we stopped for a roti or Thai pancake, which definitely satisfies the sweet tooth. We followed the signs to the east side of the beach, which turned out to be a bit disappointing. The beach is not as scenic or even swimmable, but it did have a few bars along the water. We were on to the next stop, which was Phra Nang Beach. The beach was just as beautiful as Raleigh, and it's hard to really have a preference. When we were done enjoying the beach, we went and grabbed some pad thai before making our way back to Ao Nang. Later that evening, we stopped by this restaurant, which I'm not sure of the name, to grab some green curry, which may have been the best I've ever had. We then found this cool bar, but we didn't have enough cash to pay for the drinks, so we just went to the convenience store, grabbed some beer, and went down to the beach to enjoy the view, which wasn't a bad backup plan. We stopped into the coffee club for a quick breakfast before heading to the Tiger Cave. Coffee club is a chain, but the coffee and the food were pretty good. But we ordered the Kangi here and both really enjoyed it. We then hired a grab car to take us to the Tiger Cave Temple, which was about 30 minutes from where we were staying. The hotel was offering a shuttle and there were tours available, but we decided to give it a shot on our own. When we got there, we wandered around the grounds a bit as there were different monuments and small temples around the area to see. There is a cave on the lower level which has a temple inside and is how it got its name. As legend, a monk came to meditate and saw a giant tiger or several tigers there. As with most temples, you have to remove your shoes, but be careful as the temple is mostly covered in marble, including stairs, so it is very slippery. We then took the 1200 plus stairs to the top of the mountain. The combination of heat and humidity, as well as sudden spurts of rain, made it a tough climb. 
not to mention some of the stair risers are more than a foot high. There are also wild monkeys throughout the entire area, which will definitely steal things out of your backpack if left unopened, and they will even just jump on top of you if they feel so inclined. We finally made it to the top, removed our shoes, and went to the overlook. At the top of the mountain, there's a large golden Buddha statue. It was a beautiful 360 degree view and worth the sweat and tears it took to get up to that place. Once we made the trek down, the fog and random showers had cleared, so we enjoyed some smoothies from the shop at the bottom of the mountain before getting a grab car back. When we got back to Ao Nang, we were pretty hungry, so we stopped in at Ao Nang Boat Noodle for lunch. We got fried rice and spicy mama noodle, which were pretty good. And after resting a bit, we headed out to the beach to catch the sunset. We ended up stopping into Ao Nang Seafood for dinner because it had a waterfront seating, which is what we were most interested in. We tried the stir fry green curry and chicken with mushrooms and oyster sauce. And the food was decent, but the view is what we enjoyed the most. We stopped into City Cafe for breakfast of eggs, toast, and bacon. The weather was raining off and on, and we decided to get Thai massages to kill some time. We went to Suko Thai Massage, which was the cheapest around and was the first Thai massage we had had, and it's quite the experience. And when we were done with that, we went back to Raleigh Beach. There was talks of going to the Fifi Islands, which is a huge attraction and something I really wanted to do, but with the poor weather and the fact that we wouldn't be getting in the water a whole lot and just spending time the boat, we decided to just go back to Raleigh Beach and chill out. We were tricked by the weather and got rained out, so we went to a coffee shop for sticky rice and mango, which I highly recommend. We went back to Fernang Beach and it was raining off and on, so we enjoyed it while we could before heading back. The boat ride back was one for the books because there was some coverage on the boat but not enough to keep the passengers from getting wet by the rain and waves. By the time we were dropped off at Ao Nang Beach, we were all fairly soaked, and if you weren't, you were about to be, because when we exited the boat, we were so far back, we basically jumped off into chest deep water. We then made the soggy walk back to our hotel to dry off. We then made our way to the last fisherman bar, which is tucked away and is the last restaurant on the beach. We were tricked again by the weather because as soon as we sat down, we were able to watch the storm roll in. We ordered a chicken salad, margarita pizza, and banana samosas, which weren't that great. We also tried to order a drink, but it was a holiday in Thailand and alcohol is a no-go. We chose to stay in Ao Nang because it had a beach and was just more of the vibe that we were looking for over Krabi Town. Getting to from the airport takes 45 minutes and costs 5 US dollars if you take the airport shuttle. If you hire a car, then that's about 20 US dollars. There are rumors of public bus which costs 3 US dollars, but we saw the sign and we were talking to people, but no one was really helpful. So we ended up just taking the shuttle there and taking a grab car back to the airport. So after our long rainy day, we didn't have access to a dryer, so we tried to use a hair dryer to dry some of our wet clothes, and so we were able to pack them. But that wasn't going quick enough, so we borrowed my mom's hair dryer that was in her room as well. But with using both of them, that caused the breaker to switch and the power was shut off in our room. So the maintenance guy had to come out, go into the ceiling of our room to flick it back on. So we figured, well, that wasn't our fault and that was something else. So we tried it again and then the power was shut off again. So he had to come back. We were like, oh yeah, it was so weird. And then, so from then on, we just used the one hair dryer. It didn't really work. We had to pack some of our clothes as they were still wet, but 
sometimes it just be like that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a better idea of what you can do in Krabi, Thailand. And if you are looking for helpful travel articles, there's a link down in the description. And if you guys want to be around for when I post on the next video, do not forget to subscribe. See you guys next time.